Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing fine. Uh, my hair has not been cut in like four months, but that's okay. It's okay. Yeah, some things have happened since the last Thrifts episode. You know, some time has passed. Yeah, that's just how it is. The world is a strange uh, existence at the moment, but that also means that we're gonna have kind of a strange episode here, or at least in terms of how the footage came together, because I haven't really been able to record anything for a while. I usually go thrifting like twice a week, and now I've gone, I think, twice in the past, I don't know, gosh, I don't know how long. Anyway, I've gotten a bunch of footage together from before that, from like December to March, and so that's gonna be in this video. Also, I've just ended up using a lot of old footage that was not in previous episodes. It was just cut for whatever reason, you know, I didn't, want to fit it in there for time constraints or I didn't think it was interesting enough. Whatever, it's in here now. And then a little bit of recent footage too because things did open back up a month or so ago. And now they're closing back down again. So I don't know. Yeah, it's a mishmash of all kinds of footage. So uh, whatever, just roll with it. Let's go thrifting. Alrighty, it is a good day for a Goodwill, so let's head inside and hope what we find is really good. And directly up near the front is a buggy of B-sides, and A-sides, and LPs, and vinyl records of all different types, 12-inch, 7-inch, 45s, and down below that were these stacks of 10-inch shellac records, actually from late 1930s, early 40s, it looks like. Don't usually see so many of them stacked together like this. And yeah, I mean, <laughs> somebody was just getting rid of their whole record collection, it looks like, just cleared them all out. There were boxes and boxes of records from Angie's closet, <laughs> according to the box writing. And then over near that was a record player. Just one of these little sound design things I run across every so often. Got some nice wood, but uh, nothing terribly special, just kind of a plasticky automatic thing. I do like seeing any with the 16 RPM on there. It's just fun to play certain records really slow. Yeah, chipmunks, anyone? Over near that was another basket of goodies, bunch of cassette tapes, as well as a selection of these VTech V smile thingies. Don't normally see that many in one spot, or <laughs> for that matter, these Scrabble Flash games. Never seen those before. Ooh, look at this. Uh, you can tell this used to be a beautiful wood grain piece here, but uh, yeah, it's been rather gutted. This is an old radio, perhaps a restoration project at some point. Turns out this is a Philco Model 38-7. The 38 apparently indicating the year that it was introduced to the market, at least according to the Philco Radio Gallery. Apparently it originally sold for $80 back in the day, and this was one of their console versions of it, offering the no squat, no stoop, no squint, inclined control panel. Used to be a gorgeous thing. I'm sure somebody could restore it uh, if you had the, you know, restoration wherewithal. Over behind that had a couple of uh, digital pianos back here. This one on top is uh, not the one for the box. It's a YTP240 by Yamaha on top here, and inside the box was an NP11, which I quite prefer the look to, just much simpler. In stark contrast to whatever this is, this is a Hamzer? Uh, I don't know, it looks like it maybe cost about five bucks to manufacture. It was, it did not feel good. And hey, look at this AV center. It's got this nice hinged glass area up here, place for a CRT in the middle, and yeah, like media storage down below. Ah, brings back weird nostalgic memories. We got a royal typewriter over here, a rather appealing old design, although I don't know exactly what model it is, or, you know, if this would even be worth restoring, but I just kind of like the way that these look, just the big old chunky bits in the middle. And then we've got this lovely assortment, the late 70s, early 80s. Oh, look at all this. I got a big old powered mixer over here, a couple of speakers from Radio Shack, and a gorgeous looking Zenith System 3 TV over here, one of their Space Command ones. Oh man, this thing looked amazing. A shame it was only RF. I probably would have gotten it otherwise. I think it was manufactured in 85 is what it said on the back. 84, I don't remember, but yeah, just a lovely looking TV. These speakers too, quite appealing as well as a realistic MC1000s manufactured for Radio Shack, by Radio Shack, whatever Radio Shack sold them. 
And then there's this, the PVXR1200, powered mixing console, I think manufactured around 1979, 1980, just an absolute monster of a machine. Uh, wonderful to look at. They were selling it for $125. <laughs> I don't know what use it would be really to anyone at the moment, but uh, man, the construction of this was just admirable. And check out all of the inputs, outputs and everything, XLR, oh my goodness. Just a beautifully overwhelming bit of old hardware. Still though, I kept going back to that TV. I've always liked the space command things. I've got a couple of myself, but not this one in particular. Ugh, I hope whoever bought it ended up having some fun with it. Speaking of fun, check out the glass case over here. You do not see these too often at Goodwill. This is a Tandy TRS-80 Color Computer 2 with the tape deck for loading stuff and uh, they were charging $200 for it. Uh, that's a little stupid. Still though, nice to see any kind of cocoa at Goodwill. And I can only assume this was related over on another shelf on the other side of the store. We had a TRS-80 DMP120 dot matrix printer, $35, much more reasonable. And it came with a box of paper and a little mount for your desk and everything. Yeah, dusty, but overall actually pretty good condition. It's got the cables and such. An admittedly tempting prospect. Hello there. Yeah, checking out the puzzles and board games just to see if anything is stuck in here since I hadn't visited in a while and is all, you know, somewhat organized today. But now uh, there's pretty much nothing in terms of like stuff I'd be interested in, big box PC games. About the only big box software I saw in the whole store here was this random little copy of Microsoft Works Suite 99. Yeah, you know, nothing terribly interesting, but it is a big box software release with some things in it for two dollars. Yeah, you know. Much more exciting to me were these Harman Kardon speakers over in the electronicals section, and I mean they're not really that exciting, but they got kind of a funky little design going on, and beige off-white computer speakers I approve. I also approve of this uh, BSR Frequency Equalizer Spectrum Analyzer Model EQ 3000. Yeah, it's a graphic equalizer. A rather attractive one, I gotta say. $42. If it didn't already have a pretty similar one, I would have grabbed this. Up above here, we've got a rather appealing looking old VHS camcorder. A Magnavox Easy Cam. What attracted me to it was this little sliding bit here. Check this out. I like this. Look, it's got all these features on here. Fade, backlight, focus, self timer. Nah, nah. Oh, what is this angular looking plastic thingy? Yeah, we got a clock radio light contraption. <laughs> I don't know why, but I, this kind of thing, it appeals to me. It grosses me out. I like it. I, I, I don't know, there's something cool about this. It's like so cheaply put together, but yet it's got its own identity. It's lovely. And this was something I wasn't quite sure what it was at first. It looked like a glorified label maker or something. I mean, that kind of is what it is in the way it works, but turns out this is a Max Letrex lettering machine, LM500 model. So obviously it prints out things that you type in, but I wasn't sure what it printed out on or what they were for. And after doing a little bit of research, it turns out that this is actually for making text and characters and things that print out on transparent ribbon that you can cut out and put onto like overhead transparencies for business presentations and such. The other really cool thing that grabbed my eye was the fact that it had these font cards that go in on the side, these little cartridge slots, adding even more letters. <laughs> I mean, it's a lettering machine, that's what it does. Oh man, look at this wood grain clad, all in one mixture device kind of thing. A Fortronics. Telephone, radio, alarm, clock, oh man. It does so much. And it even has hands-free mode. Oh, <laughs> fancy. And that beige and wood grain combo, you can't beat it. Man, that was quite the string of older electronics here this time. Seriously, look at this, Sylvania portable record player. It's an Exponent 4 slash 40, solid state. Bass treble and loudness and balance knobs. Charging $225 for it though. I got some more 90s looking computer speakers here, some little Sonys. I don't see these too often. It looks like it probably would have gone to one of their Vio machines. And maybe related to that, maybe not. Got a Sony Vio keyboard over here. Maybe a little later, I don't know, same era. It's got an XP logo Windows key right there. Not a great keyboard, but uh, yeah, Sony, that's a thing. 
Another bit of old electronics just above that, this concert mate. Mostly was just attracted to it because of that balance slider in the middle there. Unfortunately, it suffered some corrosion from those six D cells it would have taken around back, but kind of a neat design. Also really neat is this JVC, the CX710US color TV stereo radio cassette recorder. All the things in just one unit. Uh, dude, I love this kind of all-in-one silliness. I'm sure these components on their own probably are no good individually, but you combine them all into one silvery looking unit and <laughs> the retro appeal is kind of off the charts. I love seeing these kind of all in one things. Oh, hey, anybody need to hop on a Zoom call? I got a Zoom dial up modem here. A V34 dial up Zoom modem, fax ready and everything. Mm, I see a 10 technology classic over here. It is an IBM typewriter, the Selectric 2. Still got some ribbon in there, probably dried out, but check out the ball. Got a Courier typeface ready to go. Absolute tanks of electric typewriters. Rather fun to use. Oh man, the, the late 70s and early 80s display of technology that's going on here. This Panasonic VCR, my goodness. What a fantastic looking design. I think the model number is PV1210X. Either way, top loaders, top notch. Well, uh, visually, maybe not so much in reliability. Ooh, we got something blue over here. What is this? We have a Fisher Thermix hot plate model 600T. Indeed. It looks very well used. I don't know. I was just attracted to it because of the, the blue. If it's blue and it plugs into a wall, I probably like it. Like this. I mean, speaking of blue electronics, what we have here is a Heathkit digital design experimenter. Now, Heathkit made a lot of these type of things. I have a couple myself, but I've never seen this one in particular. Basically just one of those devices to let you mess around with digital logic and electrical gates. And yeah, you just need some wires and some chips and whatever. You can make things happen on here. Really cool to see in a thrift store. Across from here is another slightly different thing I normally see at Goodwill. This is an HP Design Jet 500 wide format printer slash plotter. It was $300, that seemed, I don't know, somewhat reasonable. An absolutely massive thing. It's like 42 inches that it can print across as you can work on Windows 95 and such. So again, just absolutely massive. And then as I was about to walk out, I noticed on the end of the counter here, this big old TAC box, or a couple of them really. Stereo Tape Deck A4010S was $200, and uh, ho ho ho, there is a rather lovely looking reels reel tape recorder in here. Oh man, if it had or took larger spools, larger reels, I suppose, then definitely would have gotten it. I am in the market for a specific type of reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder, but uh, this wasn't quite the one. Still really awesome to see, especially in the box. And then one more thing over across from there. I don't know why this wasn't back in the electronics, but it was up here near the front. We have a Texas Instruments TI-99 4A computer. Again, $200. They're pricing a lot of these older things way higher than they should be. Like I bought one of these basically brand new in box from Goodwill a while back and it was like 20 bucks. I know times are changing and prices are going up, but come on, this is a little ridiculous. 200 bucks for a 99 4A that's a little bit beat up. Uh, no thank you. All right, on to the other Goodwill for this episode here. And uh, yeah, this is the one, if you remember <laughs> whatever the last video was, they were building this building out beside it. It turns out it was supposed to be a Panera Bread, I believe. And they finished it up like right near the end of March, right about the time that all the restaurants and everything pretty much shut down. So that was some rather poor timing on their part. What an awful era to try and open a new restaurant. But yeah, inside the Goodwill, I was immediately drawn to this on top of the glass case near the front. We got a Corsair computer case, a pretty beefy one. They're charging 75 bucks for it, which, I mean, a good deal to me if one was in the market for this type of big old case. And down below that was a boxed portable phonograph from General Electric. I didn't take it out, couldn't get a good look at it, but uh, still, record player in the box is kind of cool. This is what it actually looks like, if you're curious. I gotta say, I love anything with orange and beige. That is a combo. 
And across from there, on one of their tables up near the front, we got another bit of retro stuff with some nice color going on. A Lady Chic Consulate hair dryer. <laughs> that baby blue space age design and everything, dude. Just a hair dryer thing, but I like it. I also have always liked these, you know? It's just, it's just a globe, but it's the way it's put together. And yeah, this is one that's just actually a globe. They also have some that fold open, you could put drinks inside, but this is a globe. It's just a globe. I approve. Oh dear, what in the world is this? Got a few dolls that have been stuck inside this glass case, uh, no doubt because they're haunted and come to life at night and try to murder you or something. Oh, hey, Woodgrain, we got some things over here. This item has been sold. Well, of course it has. Just take a look at that. That's a rather attractive mini fridge. You know, in that kind of really ugly way. And hey, we have an even minier mini fridge. Or maybe this is a freezer. I think it's fridge. This is a Sanyo, though. I dig that old logo, and uh, yeah, very similar design, considering it's not the same brand. Oh man, <laughs> this folding chair. This is a kid's folding chair, but as a kid, we used to have some chairs that were like exactly this, but you know, larger for normal sized people. There's something particular about the way that these bits on here just deteriorated. It brings back such strange memories of like picking it apart. The weirdest things bring back certain very vivid memories. Check out this TV over here. Is it a monitor? I don't know. It's from Dell, though. It's actually a rather slick design. Yeah, I just like the white casing that it's in. I don't know. It's kind of different from all the silver, gray, black monitors you normally see. Anybody need some Pi 10s? There's there's a lot of them. At least 10 Pi 10s. It's $10 for a box of those. Cool. Alrighty, now this is an absolute winner here. Look at this. This is an Equinox 380X music computer from Gbronson. Yeah, I'm attracted to any of these kind of organ type setups, but this one in particular with the surround design here just envelops you in touch sensitive buttons and rhythm switches. And it's got this cartridge loading thing where you can add expander pack carts to add new rhythms and sounds or something. And dude, just an amazing looking design. It's a hundred dollars. Monstrously huge. Don't know how well it actually works or anything, but yeah, the music computer. Didn't know that existed. Now I'm glad I know it does. Oh, hey, we got an NMB keyboard over here in the electronic section. Unfortunately, the switches suck. But still, not the worst keyboard. It's got that late 90s aesthetic, so that's cool. And check out this monitor over here. What is going on with this? This is a Tandberg 1700. It's got speakers and a big old camera on top. And yeah, look at all these connections. Turns out this is not just a monitor. This is like a full on video conferencing terminal, a so-called executive control center designed for offices. Yeah, I gotta say that is a first for me. Never seen one of these before at Goodwill. Shame it didn't have the power supply. I might've picked it up eh, just on a whim. It's also nice to see this Samsung SyncMaster monitor here. Just because of the 4-3 aspect ratio and it's not yet another black gray monitor. Always nice to see. I got another sound design thing over here. This almost looks like one of those toy CD players I used to see as a kid, but nah, this was a, an actual CD player. It's just got the most rounded, weird design to it. It kind of looks like a toy. <laughs> just what in the world were they thinking? Oh, hey, down here I see a flight thingy. Got a yoke set up of some kind. Yeah, for PCs those high quality suction cups on the bottom. <laughs> 15 pin game port connection, yeah. Don't need any of these, but it's kind of cool to see. Oh man, and check out the old down here. This is kind of not in the best shape, but dude, it looks cool. I cannot read the brand, but that's a heck of an adding machine, man. Oh, hey, this stood out from the crowd. We got a SVHS high grade S video cable from uh, JVC, which is perfect. I was actually just looking for one of these for my JVC SVHS VCR. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna grab it. Why not? It's still in the package. Doesn't look used at all. And <laughs> what in the world is this? Nutrigrade Extreme Zone. Oh, okay. So it's a nutrition calculator, pocket computer type of thing with over 10,000 foods in the database, including 4,500 dining out and restaurant foods. Kind of curious exactly what restaurants they included. Oh man, <laughs> wow. This is an old easy bake oven right here. Check out that packaging. Simple, safe, fun, over 5 million ovens sold. My goodness though, look at that oven. <laughs> that is a design right there. Oh, what a delightful little assortment of flashlights. Somebody put some time into stacking these up. 
I also appreciate these old oil filters. <laughs> that, you know, they're not something you see very often, especially in the packaging. Now we have this old Sears flashlight. A rechargeable Krypton. Ooh, it's got a Krypton bulb. But yeah, plug right there in the bottom. Rechargeable flashlight from the 80s. That is neat. Also neat, look at this vacuum. <laughs> oh, the design is beautiful in that most hideous of ways. It's a rainbow vacuum, never heard of that. But this entire design, that's the kind of hideous that you forget about. And then here it is, and you're like, how? Over in the media, and there was actually a decent little assortment, at least compared to what I normally see, of eight track tapes in here. Nothing I'm necessarily looking for, but you know, yay, eight tracks. And then down below that in the records, this stood out. For obvious reasons, learn code with the Amico code course. How to send, how to receive, easy to learn. Yeah, this is Morse code on vinyl. <laughs> That's, there's no way I'm not getting this. Two 12 inch records, absolutely, you are mine. And then one last thing as I was heading out, I happened to notice this cute little Sony Vio mouse just hanging around on top of the cables and cords. I don't, I don't need it, but I kind of like it. It's just a little PS2 mouse. Sure, why not? And that is it for the 45th episode of LGR Thrifts. Bit of a different one, didn't pick up very much, but dang, there were some cool things out there to see. And you know what, I'm happy with these couple of things here. I got this weird learn code vinyl record. I got a nice high grade S video cable and a little Sony Vio mouse for uh, one of the Sony Vios I have. Why not? But yeah, seriously, you know you gotta hear this learn code record. What does this thing even sound like? Uh, well, it's exactly what you'd expect. I love this. <laughs> this is the stupidest, the greatest, the best, dumbest thing I have on vinyl just about. I don't know, I have some pretty weird stuff on vinyl, but this is one of those records that is just perfect, and I'm glad it exists. <laughs> anyway, that is it for this episode, and I usually have a whole lot of viewer submissions of things you found going thrifting here at the end, but Obviously, with people not really going out nearly as much, there hasn't been as much submitted, which is fine. Totally makes sense. You know, stay safe out there. Obviously, times are bizarre, and it is what it is. As for me, I'm going to continue following my own local guidelines and just trying to be as safe as possible. Don't really know when the next episode is going to be at this point. Seriously. So, I hope that you enjoyed this one, and... We'll see you in the next thrifts, whenever that may be. One of these days, as always, thanks for watching and stay safe out there.